So this talk began uh, last summer when Lee was actually getting his SS7 knickers in a knot. And it was all about um, why do people keep taking shots at the PSDN? And why doesn't anybody talk about what we really want to do? So the voice 2.0 mechanism of Alicare, okay, the voice 2.0 manifesto's four years old now. What do we want to do? Well, about that time, Oswald Rail, a Voight blogger, a friend of ours here, said, you know, if the internet principle calls for connecting to multiple networks, why do Voighters want to kill the PSDN? So two things said. I said, okay, we, I'll, I'll take up the challenge, and I'll put together a little story around what is it that we're trying to build. And so this is my vision or my view of what we're looking at here. I didn't know I had 15 minutes. You only told me 10. Hey. <laughs> Whatever. So, I want to go back for a second and take a look at an experience that we may have in the way that we do communication here. And I want to talk about a park bench. How many people have sat on a park bench lately? I'm curious about this crowd. A few people back here. Good, good. Okay, everybody else, when this is done and you've stopped Twittering and Facebook and updating and everything else, let's shut, step away from the keyboard and go outside, right? Breath of air. I see some claps over here. Good. So if you think about the park bench experience and what we do and what we look at, we can go to the park bench and we can see immediately what somebody's doing there. They might be talking on the phone. They might be studying. They might not want any interaction. There's a, a presence, really, that we're getting, a ability there. We may be able to go and have a conversation, talk to each other, be able to work with this. We may share. More than just sharing, it might be files, it might be video, it might be computer, it might be whatever it may be, we're, we're also able to go and collaborate. We can play games, we can go and exchange money, we can, again, collaborate, work, create documents, create pieces together, we can do this type of thing. We can have a large number of people around our park bench, or around our area that we're there. We can also just have a few people. It can be sharing of secrets. It's very secure unless somebody is bugging our bench or parabolic mics, whatever it may be. The question really is, can we do this today over the PSTN? And this goes back to the question of, you know, if this is the experience we have, can we do that <coughs> over a thousand miles apart? And to answer my friend Aslav, no, we can't do this over the PSTN, but we're getting glimpses. The challenge we have today, if we look at what we're doing in this space, if we looked at the people over the last several days, everybody's got a little bit of this picture, right? The pictures are, the pieces are there. Let's take a minute and look at what this is that we're putting together, the pieces that are making this up. Certainly it's presence, but it's more than just presence. I mean, we've had presence for how many years? With, the, uh, with our phone, right? Busy signal, they're busy. We want rich presence. We want the ability to know not only is somebody available, but how are they available, when are they available, will they be available, Lee will permanently make it so I can't connect to him. Okay, he wants that ability, all right? So we have, to, we want this capability to have a rich set, uh, set of presence. We want names, okay? We don't want to be doing this numbers. How many of you are users of Skype? Okay? All right? Look at all those hands that are going up there, right? So people, you know, we use Skype, we use Skype names, we use that type of capability It's there. We want multimodal experience. We want to start in a chat, move into voice, move into video, move back, share files, collaborate. We want to start in video and then institute chat. We want to be able to go and move seamlessly be between all of these different modalities in the different ways that we work. We want to share. When we're in the middle of a conversation, of a communication session, whatever it may be, we want to be able to go and share files, share documents, whatever we want to go and do. We want to collaborate. We want to edit that document. We want to be able to make that video. We want to do whatever pieces are there. We also want wideband audio. Jonathan's talk yesterday. Why is it in 2009 that we're stuck with that 3 kilohertz limitation? What's going on? You know, but look, I mean, we, we'd love to add wideband to our platform. So would everybody else probably. But look at that slate of... Uh, of codex that Jonathan put up yesterday. Which one do we choose? Now, I applaud Skype for what they did yesterday to bring out, I mean, until we get to the point where, where we have the G711 of wideband, something that's ubiquitous and royalty-free. We're not going to get wideband. I will take issue with one thing. I think it ultimately needs to be open source. We need to have some way that we can, that somebody can go and put this thing into a PSP because they want to do wideband audio off that device. 
We need to be able to let engineers put this kind of technology out there. Same thing with video. Okay, we, you know, video codecs, the ability to go and have that. We want that high definition video. Okay, if you've played with all those Skype users, the high def video, you can see the quality there. Of course, we also want that control of being able to control who has access to us in which modality. Okay, we don't want to necessarily just launch video right away. We do want it to be secure. Phil Zimmerman talks about the ability to whisper in somebody's ear from a thousand miles away. That's the kind of, of security, the type of thing we'd like to do. We also need identity. If I'm face to face with you, I know who you are. If I'm really paranoid, I can ask you for your identification, whatever it may be, but I can see you. But if I'm on a connection to RJ in the back of the room, and we're over a voice or a bit, you know, connection like that, how do I know he's really who he is? How do I know this type of thing? Anybody who deletes the email from address, is there anybody left who does? Good, thank you, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah you would, okay. So, but no, <laughs> you, you can't believe any of that. We need strong identity. We need to be able to go and do that. Why does Skype work? Why are all these people here? Okay, we, it controls the directory, right? If I want to do this in SIP, if I want to be able to connect to somebody else out there, how do I find that person? Directory is a huge, it's a bit of plumbing, you know, that we're building in different places. We've got different attempts to go and do this. But ultimately, for us to have that rich IP communications experience, we've got to solve the directory side of things and be able to make that work. Or else we have walled gardens of directories, like we currently do today, where we've got different directories in different places. And this is perhaps the least sexy topic out here, okay? But billing. At the end of the day, all this infrastructure makes money, you know, costs money. We've got to figure out how to go and do this. I did an interview with uh, Jim, uh, the CEO of Transnexus recently, where he talked about the open settlements protocol. And I don't know if that's the ultimate solution or you know, part of things, but it's one of those answers out there. An open protocol where people can be able to go and deal with the billing issues, to be able to go and, and ultimately make money to keep the lights on and do all of this. It's got to be mobile. Everything here we've talked about mobile because we've got to be able to have that experience and be able to work with this environment there. And it's got to be social. Right? You can see my question here. How many tweets have gone on here? We are in this ecosystem of applications, in this ecosystem of, of various different ways of connecting and working, and our communication experience has to be part of that. We talk about emerging communications, we talk about the way to go and make this work. It needs to be integrated with the rest of our life as we go and do this. But we want to do it not with a truckload of equipment that costs $100,000. We want to do it with our laptop or with our iPhone or something on this line. We want to do it. Now, is any of this revolutionary? Is anybody going to say anything I've said here is revolutionary? It's not, right? These are the pieces that we have here today. We're, we're building all these things. We've heard the solutions, but we're not yet necessarily putting them together yet. Now, you know, the reality is I can talk all I want, but if we take the rose-colored glasses off for a minute, there are certainly folks who don't buy into this picture. And there's certainly folks in the traditional world who like the PSDN, like the models that are there, okay? They're awfully addicted to that revenue. They want to be able to go and do that. And guess what? They've got all the lawyers. There's probably more lawyers for some of the traditional PSDN firms than there are people in this room, right? Okay? They've got the, uh, the guns, the weaponry, as far as the, uh, they can pull out Homeland Security, E911, okay? Universal Service, they, they can legislate, they can do all of that, and they've got the money. Look at the... the you know, $2 trillion dollar rethink, right? Think how much of that is spent on lobbying. All right, we've got a bazillion things that are happening out there. Now, the smart players in the current PSTN, they're here. I've met some of them here who are in this audience. They understand that they need to go and figure out how to play in this game. But the others out there are standing in the way. Okay, and they will continue to stand in the way. So the question I have for you out there, the three question and two comments here, is that one is, where are you? Are you helping build the puzzle? Are you putting the pieces together in something that's there? Or are you going to stand in the way? And the final question I'll have is, Alex said on the way out, we need to be thinking about this stuff. What's the bigger picture? What are we trying to build? And we need more people in this room. This is the start. But we need to bring in the people that are out there and the people who would oppose it, and we need to tell them this is how, we need to help them understand how they can make money, how they can do this. And we need to help them join in that conversation and to be part of that. I'm going to leave you with that because I'm running out there and say that maybe, maybe we can get to the point where we can actually have that experience. It may take us years, it may take us decades, hopefully not, but it is there. 
I hope you'll join in that. You can find this in print, hopefully, on disruptivetelephony.com. I'm also at Voxeo, where we're building this kind of thing. And we're trying to, and also, we have an Indian dinner tomorrow night if you'd like to join us, RFCD there. That's it.